Have you ever found yourself relaxing on a nice sunny day, birds chirping, enjoying a stimulating book? When you stumble across something like this, the Gospel of Mark was written after 70 AD. And you ask yourself, what's that based on? So you wonder if maybe there's some kind of archaeological evidence to support that claim. But nope. How about something from within the text itself? But you find out it's not that either. So you ask yourself, what then is it? And you read on to find that it's scholarly consensus. You're not an expert in the field, so you could be okay with that. But you'd at least like to know what that consensus is based on. And the argument you get is something like this. The Jerusalem temple was destroyed in winter AD 70. Texts forecasting that temple destruction must have known this fact. The Gospel of Mark forecasts this temple destruction. Therefore, the Gospel of Mark must have been written after AD 70. Now, if you're anything like me, it's at this point that you're like, wait a second. Well, my friends, you've stumbled upon what we in the field of logic call begging the question. Begging the question is a type of logical fallacy. A logical fallacy is a mistake in reasoning that renders an argument invalid and thus unpersuasive. Begging the question occurs when the predicate of an argument, that is, the assumption that the argument relies on, assumes the truth of the conclusion it's trying to prove. Or put another way, the predicate is no more plausible than the conclusion it's purporting to prove. Let's walk through this with another example. Tim saw Sue petting an animal, but Sue would never pet a cat. Therefore, the animal that Sue was petting was not a cat. Do you see the problem here? Tim saw Sue petting an animal. We can be okay with that. But Sue would never pet a cat. Well, that's actually the question that we're trying to answer. And at this point in the argument, that fact is unsubstantiated. If it turns out that that's true, then yes, of course, the animal could not have been a cat. Without more, it's no more believable that Sue would never pet a cat than it is that the animal was not a cat. And so this argument proves, well, it proves nothing. Now, this can be frustrating because it may very well be true that the animal was not a cat. It's just the argument has not proven that. In other words, we haven't been given any evidence to substantiate why Sue would never pet a cat. Merely stating this as fact just begs the question. Let's turn back to our original example that texts forecasting a temple destruction must have known this fact. That's unsubstantiated at this point. It simply assumes the conclusion that texts with temple prophecy were written after 70 AD. But that only begs the original question, which is how do we know that Mark was written after 70 AD? We're not gonna try to settle this issue here. We'll leave that for another video. But it is worth pointing out that there are counter arguments to the statement that the inclusion of destruction prophecy proves that the event had already happened. Now it's equally important to say that these counter arguments don't prove the opposite either, that the inclusion of these statements in the text means that they were written before 70 AD. I'm Kirlyn Lawrence, and I started Apologica to bring a logical focus to arguments in biblical scholarship. In our journey here, we'll sharpen some arguments that have been weakened by poor reasoning, debunk some fallacious other ones, and hopefully equip you with the tools to reason through biblical scholarship yourselves. In my first series, I'll be critically examining the concept of marking priority and why it's logically unsupported. If any of this sounds interesting to you, please like and subscribe. See you soon.